I have a doorbell problem, and this is how I'm going to solve it. When I'm at the workbench, and especially if I'm listening to music or a Hello, podcast, Hi, I'm good. Thank you. if the doorbell rings, I can't hear it down here. So I'm going to solve it with this extra doorbell chime and a wireless remote relay PCB made with today's sponsor, PCB Way. I could just try to wire this new extra doorbell chime into the existing doorbell system, but I'd have to upgrade the existing transformer to power two chimes, and I would just prefer a minimally invasive and flexible solution. So I'm going to use this previous PCB project with a clamp-on current transformer to monitor the current for the existing doorbell transformer wiring. Then when the original doorbell rings on the main floor, I can sense the current and wirelessly trigger this new PCB to ring the new doorbell chime at the same time in the workbench area. So the ESP8266 module on the current transformer board continuously monitors the RMS current and waits for a certain threshold between 300 and 400 milliamps I found works well to indicate that the doorbell is ringing. Then this module sends out a message using ESP now to the module on this relay control board and then this board momentarily closes the relay contacts and then opens them again. So wiring in the doorbell switch for the new doorbell chime here, this module can ring the doorbell in the workbench area. Before I was using ESP now, I tried a few other methods like using Wi-Fi with a client server station and access point, and I also tried a mesh network, but I just couldn't keep the modules connected. So I looked up some example projects and found that ESP Now allowed me to have a good interaction between the modules and I stuck with that. I'll put links in the description to any ESP Now reference material. The schematic for this relay control board is relatively straightforward and it uses a bunch of things I've used before. So starting on the left hand side we have the WeMOS module here and in addition to wireless communication I took the UART and an extra GPIO here down to a header so if I want I can use this data direction GPIO here and plug in an RS-485 to UART interface and control the module this way or I can use this header and connect something like one of these Bluetooth modules and try controlling the relay with this method. So that's just some future expansion. I haven't worked with this yet. And another connector here for future use, if it ends up working. I just have an audio jack and it goes to this GPIO here on pin D4 because I may want to try using this Mozzie sound synthesizer library. Maybe I can generate some sounds including a doorbell sound or play back some WAV files or something. I wanted the relay side to be isolated from the logic side, so I'm providing isolated 5 volts using the B0505S DC to DC converter I've used before. And to control the relay from this GPIO here, I'm using an optocoupler and a simple generic transistor driver to turn this relay on or off. There's a power LED and a relay status LED, and whatever I connect to these screw terminals go to the relay and can be controlled. On the GitHub project for this relay control board, there are three sketches. One goes into the relay board, another goes into the other current transformer board, and another one here is just put into each module before I use them so that I can just print out the MAC address because that's needed for ESP now to directly communicate with each module. So if we start by looking at the sketch for the current transformer board monitoring the doorbell current, I would put in the MAC address of the the other module which is the relay board so that this board can talk to this other module. And to measure the current in the current transformer I'm using the energy monitor library this time and that's available to search out directly in the Arduino IDE library manager and otherwise using ESP now that's just part of the ESP8266 available features. I'm setting it to trigger when I see 300 milliamps RMS on the doorbell and this is a calibration number 
4.92 is what worked for me. I just had to tweak that number until I got the actual current that I was seeing using my other clamp meter as a reference. When the current monitor senses that the doorbell is ringing, it sends this structure message over to the other module telling it that it has an event triggered. So this is used by ESP now and I could add more variables and data in here but really all I need is this module to talk at all to the other one and it means inherently we are now triggered so do something. So to access this structure record, we use message to relay down in the sketch. So I do the usual things needed for setup of the energy monitor and ESP now. And when this module sends out data, there's a callback function called onDataSent that will run. And that's down here. All it does is verify the status if our message was delivered successfully or not. In the loop, I just keep reading the RMS current, and if it exceeds our threshold of 300 milliamps, we set a trigger status to say we are now ready to send a message out. So that's the one module monitoring the current and sending out messages to turn on a relay. In this other sketch that goes in the relay board, similar configurations, including we set the MAC address of the other module that we're receiving messages from, and with ESP now, there's a callback function for when data is received. So the module is going to be just running this process events function over and over, and in the background, when ESP now receives data, it will call this function. So we go and get the relay message out of that message structure, and if the relay is supposed to be triggered, I set this variable here. So now, when the loop is running, and we do have a relay trigger event, I start a couple of timers. One of them controls how long I turn on that doorbell relay, and there's another timer that's one second. So if somebody's going to keep pressing the doorbell, I don't need to keep hearing it more than once per second, so I just ignore any other triggers until a second has passed. Here is the test setup. I have two serial monitors going. The one on the top is going to be for the board I plug in later to receive trigger events with the relay to turn on and an LED. The other ESP8266 right here is going to be in the bottom serial monitor. This is plugged in to the current transformer here and this along with a Unity clamp meter as a reference. They are clamped to AC wires I have hanging out here from this receptacle so I can plug in a load and measure current. And I have two different LED lamps. So each one of these may be 160, 170 milliamps. So the idea with the sketch set up to generate a trigger if I exceed 300 milliamps, if I turn one lamp on, which I can do here with the power bar. I'm getting right now 170 milliamps on this meter, and then I manually turn on the switch to the other lamp, and it jumps to 345 or so milliamps. So I'll do this to trigger the relay when I'm ready. Over in the serial monitor, I'll connect to the current monitor board. Right now we only have zero milliamps, so I don't mind that this idles with about five or six or seven milliamps of offset from zero because I'm looking to measure several hundred milliamps. So to me, this is just noise. So I'll clear again and reconnect. Now that it's initialized, it's just telling me every half a second a ping message just so I know everything's running. If I turn on one lamp, 170 or so milliamps, and that's about what I'm getting in the serial monitor. Turn on two lamps, 345 or so, and I'm going to disconnect again so we can look at this. 342, but now we reached our trigger, so we are actually trying to send out messages to the other ESP module. It's not connected, so delivery failed, but it's still going to keep trying to communicate with it. So I'll turn off all the lights connect to this again. So we're back to measuring current. Now I'm going to plug in the other module and it gave a startup message that it's waiting for a trigger event from this one wirelessly to this one. So if I turn on this switch, both lights are going to come on and it should generate an, an event. I'll turn it on momentarily. 
So if I disconnect here, we had no activity. Then suddenly we detected well over 300 milliamps. We tried to trigger an event. Now that the second module is powered up, it delivered a message successfully. Then I had immediately turned the switch back off. So we're back to zero current. And so I'll just join again up in the top. At timestamp 20 seconds, 20.3 seconds, we started a trigger when we got this message. We turned on the relay and then the relay was turned back off. It looks relatively close enough to 500 milliseconds, which is what we want. And the entire trigger duration lasted one second as we had set from 20.3 to around 21.3 seconds. So in this one second time frame, if there's multiple messages coming out, we're only going to accept the first one, turn the relay on and off in a controlled manner, and after this one second, that's when we will allow re-triggering. Now that the new doorbell has been wired up in a temporary way for testing, if I connect it to the relay and then go and ring the doorbell again, Now I just have to make this a little more safe and permanent so I can actually use it.